on the morning of September 8th, 1944. Germany introduced a new secret weapon to its already deadly World War II. It came out of nowhere and caused a massive explosion in Paris. There was nothing to compare it to. The weapon was part of Germany's Wunderwaffe, its miracle weapons program, created in a last-ditch effort to shift the war's balance in the Third Reich's favor. The V-2 rocket, nicknamed the Retribution Weapon II, was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. No defensive systems of the time could do anything to counter the weapon, and V-2s rarely failed to reach their targets. They were extremely fast, powerful, and precise. The Allied forces, desperate to find an efficient way to counter the V-2's sheer effectiveness, realized that there was only one way to avoid further destruction. The solution was destroying the secret German military bases where they were assembled. Operation Crossbow's objective was simple. Find the enemy bases where the V-2s were located and blow them to smithereens. But things weren't going to be that easy. The Allies soon realized that there were not two or four or ten research facilities, but more than fifty scattered all over Europe. A race against time was undertaken to destroy them all before the bombs could disrupt American supply lines in France. Everything seemed lost to the Allies, until an innovative method created by the British intelligence seemed to offer hope. Cutting-edge 3D photography would reveal where the V-2 launch sites were hidden. World War II began in 1939, when the Third Reich and the Soviet Union attacked Poland and divided the country into two blocks. One became part of Germany, and the other of the USSR. After months of tension, Belgium, France, and the British Empire declared war on Germany for other countries' occupation in Northern Europe. After the astonishing and effective Blitzkrieg campaigns, Germany took over most of Europe except for neutral and allied nations. Everything went well for the German here until 1943. After the initial success of Operation Barbarossa, the Soviets, supported by the Americans and the British, began to counterattack. Simultaneously, American and British bombers slowly but steadily increased their bombing raids over German sites like Hamburg, Lübeck, and Dresden. These bombing raids did not distinguish between military and civilian targets, which caused severe and permanent damages to historic buildings alongside tragic civilian casualties. Every structure, military and non-military alike, was crushed in Operation Gomorrah appropriately referencing the Old Testament biblical city destroyed by fire and brimstone. Al Murray, in his new show Why Does Everyone Hate the English, cited a Royal Air Force bomber command that once said, quote, The government, for excellent reasons, has preferred the world to think that we still held some scruples and attacked only what the humanitarians are pleased to call military targets. I can assure you, gentlemen, that we tolerate no scruples. The Führer, Adolf Hitler, angry at the destruction that Allies bombers were causing to German cities, demanded to make the Allies pay for what they had done. With a desire for payback, Hitler immediately ordered the production of a secret wonder weapon that had been in development since the beginning of the conflict. It was the Vergeltungswaffen, or Retribution Weapon II, the V-2 rocket. As its name said, the weapon would avenge the civilian casualties and damage done to German cities by Allied bombing raids. 
V-2 rockets were an evolution of the V-1, an early cruise missile. However, the V-2 was larger, faster, and more potent than its predecessor. The rocket was 14 meters tall and equipped with a 907 kilogram Amatol warhead at the tip. Its size gave it a range of 320 kilometers with a maximum speed of 5,760 kilometers per hour. This rocket was fast. Really fast. Its speed and range made it practically impossible to intercept. Allied attempts at jamming the V-2's guidance system was useless, because the warhead did not use radio guidance. Instead, the V-2 rocket was guided by gyroscopes and an analog computer that continually monitored its course to adjust it accordingly. The V-2 was intended to be launched from complexes similar to modern missile silos. But Allied bombing raids and the infantry advances on the ground forced the military to rely on mobile launch platforms that were moved continuously to avoid being targeted by enemy aircraft. More than 5,500 V-2 rockets were built between 1943 and 1945, with almost 100 launched every day since the first one hit Paris in September 1944. The rockets wreaked havoc on Allied cities. Between 5,000 to 9,000 military and civilian personnel lost their lives, and 30,000 were injured by the damage caused by the V-2s. During the first months of 1943, Allied bombing raids were quickly escalating in Germany. By May, Members of the High Command had already envisioned the possibilities of launching an amphibious assault on the northern and southern coasts of France to begin the liberation of Europe. During these days, while conducting air surveillance of enemy activity, Allied recon aircraft identified the construction of various German facilities in northern France. Simultaneously, other secret facilities were spotted across Germany and the Scandinavian countries. Some Allied officers feared that the Germans were building chemical or biological weapons. Others believed that it was a strategy to distract the Allies from the bombing raids. Through Polish intelligence, the British Secret Intelligence Service received valuable reports that Germany was working on a secret rocket at Pinamunda, where a facility was located. Wishing to stop any weapon development that could favor the Germans, the War Cabinet Defense Committee decided to take action. During a meeting held in June, Winston Churchill said, quote, Pinamunda is beyond the range of our radio navigation beams, and we must bomb by moonlight. Although the German night fighters will be close at hand, and it is too far to send our own. Nevertheless, we must attack it on the heaviest possible scale. The result was Operation Hydra, launched on August 17, 1943. This Royal Air Force Bomber Command mission's objective was to dismantle the German Scientific Research Center at Pinamunda. For maximizing the accuracy and damage of the bombing raids, the British decided that it would be best to attack during a full moon at 2,400 meters. This was meant to diminish casualties and fulfill the secondary objectives, like destroying the quarters where the facility's scientists and engineers lived. During the nights of August 17th and 18th, the British 83rd Squadron, a force of 500 bombers under Captain John Searby's command, bombed the area. They lost 215 air crews and 40 bomber aircraft. The Luftwaffe lost 12 night fighters and more than 170 civilians, including scientists and engineers. Although no permanent damage was provoked to the facility itself. To prevent more attacks on Pinamunda, the Germans painted signs of bomb damage to the facility to fool Allied recon planes. 
scientist Siegfried Winter would write, quote, We climbed onto the roofs and painted black and white lines to simulate charred beams. The bombing was deemed a success because it forced the German military to rely on mobile and not static launch sites for the V-2 rockets. Operation Hydra became the first of a series of bombing raids that the Allied command would eventually rename Operation Crossbow, intended to destroy any secret military of V-2 rockets launch facilities. In November 1943, British reconnaissance aircraft discovered the first of 96 sites for the V-1 and V-2 rockets. The Allies tracked down these launch sites using photos taken with a stereoscope that showed the enemy landscape in 3D. The pictures allowed British photographic interpreters to measure height and other data to identify hidden structures and launch sites across Europe. The technique proved decisive for stopping the onslaught caused by the effective V-2 rockets. To render the 3D effect, images had to be captured in sequences that overlapped each other by 60%, so they could stand up when viewed through the stereoscope. Pilots of the Photographic Reconnaissance Unit, aboard British Spitfires, took millions of photographs to recreate highly detailed maps. The Spitfires from this unit were unarmed, as they carried five cameras that left no space for any type of armament. Flying at 9,000 meters, they could not afford to take any extra weight. 88-year-old Jimmy Taylor, a reconnaissance pilot and the only survivor from the unit, told BBC, quote, We had no guns, no bullets, so I didn't kill anyone. Physically, there's nothing left of the air fights, nothing left of the bombing. But the photographs are still with us, and they're still useful. From the last months of 1943 to Germany's surrender in May of 1945, British and American bombers carried out bombing missions on most of the 96 launch sites to disrupt the launch of the V-2 rockets. If it were not for the effectiveness of the 3D pictures, more than 9,000 lives would have been claimed by the first ballistic missile. Alan Williams, curator of the National Collection of Aerial Photography, in a report about the operation said to the BBC, quote, Without this photographic intelligence, the Germans could have launched potentially devastating attacks on Britain before D-Day that could have easily changed the outcome of the war. Although the V-2 rocket was an effective weapon with no real opposition since it was first used, like many other wonder weapons, it came too late in the war to make a change in favor of Germany. Nevertheless, the V-2 left a lasting legacy. Combined with the introduction of nuclear weapons, it proved that the most important weapons of the future would be ballistic missiles. And the V-2 rocket was the first of its kind. After the war ended, the Soviets and the Allies tried to collect as much information from the V-2 program as possible. The earliest Soviet and American ballistic missiles of the Cold War were copies of the V-2. German scientists from the V-2 program, including its leader, Werner von Braun, helped develop other weapons for the U.S. and the USSR at the Cold War's height. In von Braun's case, he was directly involved in the U.S. space program, helping NASA land on the moon in 1969. 